Hey guys, it's Quana, and I'm back again with another review. It has been a while since I've been here, but I'm going to talk about the latest episode of This Is Us, episode seven, dinner and a date. Um, so before we go further, please do me a favor and click the like button down below and give me a thumbs up if you like this video and do not mind anything in the background going on with my dog. Um, so it's been a while and this is as has been a very strong season, although there have been bits and pieces that I felt have taken a while to get their footing and we're now just kind of getting the payoff from that first episode. And I think with a show like this where you have such a large ensemble, you know, we spent some time with Kevin and um, we sit, spent, um, we've been spending a lot of time with Kevin actually, right? Um, and so now we're finally back to Randall and not Randall as like Councilman Randall. We've kind of established that he's doing okay, but now we're getting the payoff with Deja and Malik. Um, this episode had a lot of intersections and um, I kind of, you know, okay, if you hadn't noticed, I'm a brown girl. So I love when we get these episodes where it focuses primarily on Randall's character because there is such a great complexity that goes into the idea of this young man who was reared by a white family and now has established his family and how his identity impacts the way that he is a father, the way that it impacts the way he navigates the world. And now that he is also the father of an adopted daughter, how he navigates being a father to her. So you have a lot of intersections in this episode. You have the intersection of Randall and his family as a child inviting his teacher over for dinner. And he finally has this kind of you know, paternal figure who is black to kind of help him tap into what it means to be black in the 1990s, growing up in America and in this predominantly white family. You also have the intersectionality of um, the family getting to know Malik and his family and the socioeconomic differences that lie there. So I thought this episode was interesting. It was really sweet. I could have watch they could have spent a whole episode on Deja and Malik I think and I would have been very satisfied because I think there is something sweet where we get to see like this budding romance and this innocence that they have about them um both with Malik and really kind of getting more of Malik's story like finding out how he finds himself as this parent um at such a young age how he really feels about Deja and just more of that date I was in love with that but because we have all of these storylines going on once, we really don't get as much information. Um, there's also a lot to unpack there with Malik's family. And I felt like some of the conversations that they were having, both with like Beth and with Malik's mom, they were kind of all talking around each other. Um, you know, there was one point where Omar Epps playing Malik's dad takes off his shirt and shows his tattoos and demands that Randall and Beth see his son for who he is, this sweet natured young man who's very innocent and not view him off of where he lives or off of the mistakes that his father has made. And I thought that was a very nice moment. The problem that I have is that even though yes, they may have been making some judgments about Malik based off of where he's from and based off of his father, Let's not get things twisted. I'm pretty sure the primary concern that they have is that their young daughter, who they've only had for two years, and by all intents and purposes, has this is her first boyfriend, she's never dated before, and he has a child. And I felt like there was kind of a dismissiveness to their concern about that. And I feel like that's a very, maybe I'm a, that's the parent in me coming out. But I thought like that was a very valid concern that they would have as parents. And I just felt like that was kind of like glossed over a bit. I also felt like they completely ghosted um, and dismissed the way that the mom um, was treating Beth and also kind of shunning or looking down on Deja as though she were the one in the wrong in this situation and judging her based off of the fact that she was a um, adopted child 
And so, you know, it kind of where it became more about what Beth and Randall were doing. And I didn't really like that because it made it seem like they were on this high horse. And I didn't feel like anyone in this situation had a right to be on a high horse. Because the reality is, you all on this corner with Malik, he has a child. That would be a concern for any parent. That would be concerned if he were an adult and his child was older and he was going into a relationship. That would be a concern that that person in a relationship as an adult would have, let alone the implications of, how is this going to affect my teenage daughter? Because as he said, oh, you're kind of the baby's stepmom. No, she's kind of 15 years old. Like, let's pump the brakes here. So I did feel like while there were some sweet moments, they, you know, the, the red flag parent in me just was kind of like, oh, no flag on the play. And I'm not, I'm not feeling this. Um, I did like the little nods, like Beth drinking in the closet. And I'm not a big drinker, but like the feeling where she said, I have three kids. Like I gotta go in the closet and hide. And it reminded me of that um, video of the mom who was hiding in the bathroom and she was eating Twizz or hiding in the pantry. She was eating Twizzlers and talking about how she has to go in the pantry and eat Twizzlers and hide from her kids. And the kids are outside and they're like, are you eating candy? So it kind of reminded me of that. Um, there's just so much to unpack that, that, like I said, the socioeconomic differences, you know, you have Malik's family judging Randall and Beth for the fact that they have, they're accomplished. And both of them come from working class families, but the, the opportunities that they were afforded, um, Randall and Beth, not without hard work, have put them in a different circumstance than Malik's family. And both by choice and by chance, because I think there's nothing wrong with being a laborer, a tradesman, and him owning his own shop, working with his hands, the life that that affords his family, um, is a valid existence. But they're all judging each other based off of their circumstances and as though one is better than the other. And so I want to see them unpack that a bit more. Um, I also like the flashbacks of like how Deja's date with Malik reminded her of her own childhood. I feel like there's something there. I don't know. It's with the writers with this show. I feel like they're always teasing us for some big surprise. So I feel like we're going to find out like down the road that Malik is her cousin. <laughs> and I was like, oh, the whole time I was just like, please don't let Malik be her cousin. Please, 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 please don't let him be her cousin. Um, with Mr. Lawrence, I just love, I mean, was getting so many, like, if Bill Street could talk kind of vibes there, if those scenes, the colors, the, the, the symbolism, the imagery, that scene was perfect. I loved it with the complexity of what, what Jack was feeling and less about race and more about inadequacy that, like, once again, like, he's not what he needs to be to be a true father for this boy, but he loves this boy. He, this boy is his world. And they have in many cases, you know, been so close and maybe in many ways more close than the other children than, um, than Kate or Kevin. And the idea that he's not enough to be a father for Randall. So that was very touching when he gives him weary blues and he's like, I'll, I'll learn, I'll read it for you. Um, I kind of want to see that. Like, I want to see like a flashback, like on the last episode. Like if you've never seen um, a show by Dan Fogelman, if you've never seen like Parenthood, usually when the show ends, they do a really good job of like montaging where the family is. And with this show being like flashback, flash forward, flashback, flash forward, flashback, and present day, I'm looking forward to when the show finally ends, like getting like moments of happiness and joy in the past and the present and the future. And so I kind of want to see a scene with Jack and Randall sitting on, sitting on the couch together and re reading Weary Blues together. I think that would be so sweet. Um, so yeah, there's just a lot to unpack in this episode. Um, I thought this was a very good episode, a very meaty episode. Um, I want to see more. I'm more interested now with 
what's going on with them. And, and maybe a little bit what's going on with Kevin, but I feel like Kevin and Kate, they just, they, it's constantly this loop. And, and we have that with Randall with like his anxiety, but they're constantly in these loops where they can't break out of their own self-sabotage. And so right now, because of that, <coughs> Randall's side of the Pearsons is way more interesting. I think it's also kind of interesting to note that with the exception of Kate's storyline with the past boyfriend that they've been teasing, kind of unearthing that more, we're not really getting much with Kevin, with young Kevin and young Kate in terms of interesting storylines. We had the full storyline, but really the focus seems to be on Randall. And I believe the show is renewed for at least one or two more seasons. So it'll be interesting to see if maybe they do something where they focus heavily on one main story arc. Um, but there's still some things that we don't know yet about that flash forward where Rebecca is, is dying. So there's still some things we don't know in terms of like Kevin and who he ends up with and, if, and who ends up being the mother of his kid. Um, where's Deja? What has happened with Deja? Why, we don't, why don't we see her? in the flash forward. So there's just so many questions that we still have, but I thought this was a beautiful episode. I think really, um, it it almost feels as though, and I don't know if there, I have to look and see if there's like a different director that they use when they do Beth and Randall, but I almost feel like it's a completely different director and writing cast when they're writing for Randall and Beth and their family than when they're writing for the others because there is there whoever the writers are it's just if it's just the same writers then it's really interesting because there were definitely some things that they put that made it feel authentic to what the black experience would be both in the 90s and currently so I thought that was really a nice touch so yeah, this was a really good episode. I enjoyed it. I'm so sorry that I haven't been around in a while. I'm filming with this new computer. So hopefully this video pans out okay. Um, the coloring is a little weird. So my hands, I've noticed as I've been talking with my hands, they look ultra red. And I look like I'm three different colors right now. But aside from that, I hope you guys like this video. Let me know down in the comments below what did you think? What was your favorite storyline? Was it Young Randall? Was it Malik and Deja? Or was it Deja, Malik, the Pearsons, and Malik's family having dinner together? So was it the dinners? Was it the date? What was your favorite storyline? What do you think is going to happen? Do you think Deja and Malik are going to end up together? What's the connection going to be between their families? Do you think that there will be, you know, R&B gave us that little not at the end about wanting to get to know Malik. So we see that they're at the point of wanting to try. So what's going to happen there? And have we, the way that this episode ended was like a nice little bow to the Randall and Jack storyline and Mr. Lawrence storyline, it seems like. And at least a promise to try from Beth and Randall. Do you think it's going to be a little while before we hear anything more from the Pearsons in Philly? And are we going to get ready to jump back more into Kate's storyline and Kevin's storyline? I feel like that's where we're going. I feel like we're going to probably have a couple of episodes, maybe three or four episodes, where we're not going to hear from Beth and Randall again. But we still have questions. There's still things to talk about. So, guys, until next time, toodles. Oh, before you go, hit the like, hit the subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.